So tell me this, you got two options. Large pizza for $20 or an even larger pizza for $6. That should be enough info for you. So welcome back to Butt Cheaper, where we take commonly expensive foods like pizza and make them as cheap as we possibly can. The average cost of pizza varies widely, but on average, most large pizzas are gonna start at minimum $13, $14. And if you're at a nice pizza place, $20, $30, I wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised, which is ludicrous to me, and we could do way better than that. 50 cents per slice, thick. I'm talking like one slice is a meal pizza. This is essentially Sicilian style. So I've mentioned this a few times at the end of my other videos, and I really wanna mention it here. I'm currently designing a new apron with one of the largest, most famous, powerful design companies in the world for all the home cooks and even for people who do other jobs. Like it doesn't, you don't even have to cook. The point is to provide value and we're making something really, really special that's never been seen before. I just wanted to put that out there. It's a secret for now, but I wanted you to know. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? So obviously in order to begin, we're gonna need a dough. Admittedly, this dough is similar to the focaccia, but with slight yet important tweaks. In the bowl of a stand mixer, add 900 grams of bread flour and 100 grams of whole wheat flour. And before anyone asks, yes, you can do this by hand. Calm down. I know it's but cheaper. And you're like, I'm just using a stand mixer. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Mix it together until thoroughly combined. Separately, get a quart container or a bowl and add 8 grams of instant yeast and dissolve with 780 grams of water. That's around 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Whisk all that together and let that sit for a minute or two. Now with your your stand mixer on low speed, add that yeasty, watery little man to your flour, then let that mix for 10 minutes. You may need to scrape down the sides to get any unhydrated flour mixed in. Make sure that there's no, you know, clots of random dry flour at the bottom. After those 10 minutes are up, add 20 grams of fine sea salt. Let that mix together and incorporate for 10 more minutes. Then finally, add 20 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Increase the speedium, <laughs> speedium. Increase the speed to medium low and let that mix for five more minutes or till completely incorporated. Now, like usual, we'll perform a light set of slap and folds by dumping it on your counter picking it up and slapping it down, then folding it over itself like so, repeatedly until it's smooth. Now, look, I know a lot of people might find this a little difficult at first. It, it will feel messy, but it will come together the more you do this, and it shouldn't stick as badly. Anyway, transfer that to a container that's been greased with olive oil. This container has about five quarts of space in it. Cover it with a lid that's also been greased and set it in the fridge for anywhere between one and three days. So, we have the dough. Wait a minute, wait, your voiceover, and now it's coming out of your mouth, and <gasps> we're intercutting? This can be left at room temperature for uh, 24 hours overnight, right? Or you can go in the fridge just like the fuck out for up to 72 hours. Okay. Now, once your long-awaited pizza day has arrived, snag yourself a baking sheet, hit it generously with some spray oil and a nice drizzle of olive oil. Dump your dough out onto your sheet, gently stretch it as far as it will allow to the edges. It'll naturally retract a little, that's okay. Then cover your sheet with another baking sheet, wrap it in plastic wrap, and let it sit at room temperature for one and a half to two hours or until it reaches the edges of the pan and it's nice and plump like this. Now, while your yeasty boys are producing voluptuous pockets of air, let's make our sauce. Heat a medium-sized sauce pot over a medium heat. Oh, medium and medium, really cute. Then add one tablespoon of olive oil. I put a little more than that in here, but for the sake of price, you can get by with one tablespoon. Once that's hot, add eight cloves of rough chopped garlic and one teaspoon or three grams of red pepper flakes. Stir that together and let that cook just until fragrant. Then add a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Stir that together again and bring to a light simmer. Then let that cook and reduce for about six to eight minutes, stirring occasionally then once that's done, season it to taste with salt and pepper and maybe a little pinch of sugar to help curb the acidity of the sauce. Then let that cool completely before adding to your pizza. Okay, so it's pizza party time. Grab your sheet tray of dough, add on a nice generous layer of sauce across the surface, then sprinkle on two cups of grated mozzarella cheese. I'd recommend grating your own, keep the price down. Then add on an extremely calculated layer of pepperoni. And I say calculated because for some reason, I, I just it has to be in the perfect spot. Otherwise, I won't be happy, but put it on how you like. Now, once your pizza is studded with meat. Pop that bad boy into your oven that's been preheated to its max, around 500 to 550 degrees Fahrenheit, or 260 degrees Celsius. Then let that bake for 20 to 25 minutes, or until the crust is a beautiful dark brown, and the cheese is melting and bubbling like this. Now we're looking at essentially a gigantic Sicilian pizza for about $6, give or take. Now let's see if the taste can surpass its price. Yay, I got the last piece, ha <laughs> ha. It's movie magic, okay kids? I'll tell you when you're older. This is essentially a Sicilian pizza. This pizza 
Grand total, grand total, cost six dollars, bro. 50 cents per pizza, basically. What, what, per slice, not per pizza. Okay, we got a four, four inches. This one's four inches by four inches. We had some that were like six inches. So we got like basically personal, this is like a personal pizza, right? This is a big piece of pizza. Symphony, a symphony. Ah, that's very good. You've got this like super, super, super unctuous and rich, chewy bread. It's soft, but it's crispy on the outside. The olive oil, it's rich, and then the cheese hits you. It's beautifully caramelized. Got little pepperonis on there. Optional, of course. Depends on how cheap you want to go. And then the sauce is like a little spicy. It's salty. A little bit of sweetness from the tomato. Why did I bite it like this? Who does that? So if you have some or most of the ingredients, this pizza is gonna cost you max six dollars. 50 cents per slice or sixteen dollars if you literally have to go buy every single thing. But nonetheless, you'll have those ingredients left over. Price point, flavor, everything put together. This isn't just pizza but cheaper. Is this a butt better? <laughs> You wanna know what else is plump and oozing with cheese? B-roll. And that is it. So we made basically a Sicilian pizza. It's very, very similar to my focaccia recipe. Not terribly different, other than I changed some proportions and timing and all that to make the crust exactly how I like it. Changed a couple things about the dough, a little bit about the timing, and you've got a beautiful, gigantic sheet pan pizza for like as little as $6, upwards of 16 if you have literally none of the ingredients and you have to buy everything. I just wanna mention, for those of you who are watching, you know, when I say it's if you have to buy everything, you also have to remember that if you're buying every single ingredient, like the flour, and garlic and this and all these whole ingredients, you have to remember that even after you're done making the pizza, you still have those ingredients to use again elsewhere. So it's hard to actually incorporate those prices because it's like, well, you're really only using a portion of it. It's not like you're using the whole bag. <sighs> I'm off my soapbox. Let me step down to the man. <laughs> Big man. But anyway, with all that said, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this one. This should be a helpful one. This is such an easy pizza to make. Everyone can make this. Anyone can participate and it's, it's so enjoyable to eat. And you can make this over and over and you can feed a lot of people with just two sheet pans of pizza. So anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.